Hello and welcome back to another video. This is a follow-up video of the filter upgrade I did last week. As you can see from here I've changed some of the pipe work now and it's from the 110 UV. Um, I think it's pretty obvious straight away there's a lot more water coming out of the um, out of the shower now. It's definitely worked. I've got some numbers to show you. Um, the pond clarity is definitely improved as well which is good. That little ring around there is kind of just there to help stop some of the bubbles from the uh, shower spreading around the pond. Just keeps the surface of the pond a bit cleaner. Similar to the feeding ring I've got in the corner, but just, just to catch kind of the bubbles coming off the, uh, the shower. I'm going to turn that off now though because if I go over there now and show you the pipe work, you're not going to be able to hear anything, say anything. So uh, I'll take, turn that off now and take you over and show you what I've done. and. And tell you some of the figures now to actually tell you what kind of percentage improvements we've achieved. So, uh, just give me a second. Now we've turned the pump off, you can hear me talk a little bit more over here now. As you can see, the B filter and everything's been moved up that 16 inch into there. I've rendered around and redone the concrete roll around the back as well, so that's all like a watertight bumper again now. We'll start with the uh, UV, I believe. So basically the UV pump, both pumps are in the same place here. As you see the uh, pump on the uh, left is the UV. It comes up through a swept bend, up through another swept bend and straight into the UV. So from pump to UV now there's only two swept bends, whereas before it was a piece of the air hose pipe for like an inch and a half. Then goes through the UV, up round the other end, back out the top, obviously there's a union either side of the UV, then 90 degrees swept straight into the side of the shower. Made this wooden frame out of some decking pieces, which is the width of one gravel board, which will again, if I step this up onto decking, that bit will all be hidden. That bit there is only there to support that piece of pipe in case I ever unscrew it with the union from the spray bar in the uh, shower but again if I build some kind of seat around this it'll all be hidden behind the seat it isn't actually screwed either to the uh, fence panel it is just that bottom point there holding it up I just didn't want all that bit free supported so I thought I'd put a bracket on it um, regarding the bead you can see there's now a bypass kit fitted to it so it basically comes straight out the pump now through a 90 degree bend in, which goes straight into the bead and completely misses the multi-port valve out, which obviously saves, I think they believe, about 30% of the pressure. Then it comes straight back out through two swept 90 degree bends under the UV, up to another swept 90 degree bend and another swept into the shower. So four swept 90 degree bends and one 90 there now at the bottom from the pump, is that's all what it has. So in total we've removed seven 90 degree bends from the bead and I think we believe we've moved four or five for the UV and also obviously all that flexible part that was there. Unfortunately the bypass kit leaked as soon as I installed it. A lot of them T pieces are already solvent welded together when it arrives. That whole section is already all solvent welded together. Unfortunately that section there leaked immediately so the solvent weld hadn't been done properly so I've had to seal that as you can see with the white sealant, uh, adhesive sealant. And also the threaded bits on the multiport valve wouldn't reach far enough over to screw further enough onto the top piece of the T piece here. Because these bits were slightly too long fitting onto the multiport valve here so again I've had to seal around them too with the white sealant as you can see to make them watertight because otherwise they was leaking. But other than that, everything else was really worked well. A bit disappointed considering how much the multi multi bypass valve cost to buy in the first place because I think it was about to run nearly £200 for that bypass kit and that's lots of money for it to arrive and not work or leak so a bit disappointed with that but it works now and no problems. I'm really happy with the 110 watt UV working brilliantly, easy access to the bulbs and the whole thing just looks a hell of a lot neater than it did before. If 
never wonder what the black bucket's for. It's basically the dome on the top of the bead filter's clear plastic. So if you leave it off, the algae grows in the dome and obviously then that doesn't do the bead much good. So keeping the, the dot black bucket on top just reduces the light into it. So the uh, sunlight doesn't turn everything green. Again, once I've built over this with some kind of decking, it should be a lot better. Because you can see the decking here should really be some kind of continuation straight over the top of the filter after you've got the sieve here. So, shouldn't be too bad. Now, this is probably the most interesting bit now when I talk about the numbers. I've got some of the numbers written down here. Now, um, I'll just go around to the side of the pond while I talk about the numbers. Obviously the pump's off at the minute so you can hear me talking because otherwise it would have been too loud. <sighs> Basically, to begin with, the UV was only actually pulling about 5,200 litres out of a 20,000 litre superfish pump, which is obviously pretty poor. Uh, as I said in the previous video, it should have been pulling around 13 at the height it's got to pump up of about a metre and a half, a metre point six. Um, after changing the pipe work on the filter, the new values for the UV now are 8,000 litres. So that's going from five to three, obviously, five to eight, sorry, is a 3,000 litre increase and a huge improvement on the flow. And you can really tell the difference when when the pumps are on just because of how much water's coming out of the shower. As far as the bead goes, the bead was originally around the low 7,000s. And now that's pumping just over 9,000. So again, about 2,000 increase. So to, between the two, two pumps the flow increase just by changing the pipe work has improved the ultimately by about five to six thousand litres between them and there's a percentage it's roughly 33 percent improvement on what it was previously now i did manage to with the old pipe work increase the flow by about five percent by just increasing the hole diameters on the spray bar i think i've talked about in a previous video uh, went up from 4.8 millimeter holes up to five and a half six millimeter holes um, to give you some kind of idea of how much more flow is going through now. Um, there's the same number of holes in the spray bars, but now I've had to cut through a 7mm hole to accommodate the extra water going through and not have too much pressure in it. So that kind of gives you an idea of just how much more water is being passed through the system. Um, the pond is, I mean it's hard to tell now obviously because we've got a bit of a dull day today so you've just got a reflection of the sky on it. Uh, the clarity of the water has always been good. I've always been able to see the bottom, the UVs have always done the job clarity wise, but there was always quite a bit of debris, you say, as if the mechanical filter wasn't quite doing pulling enough out. Maybe there wasn't enough going through either the skimmer or the bottom drain. But I must admit, the number of them particles in the water now, as you can see with the fish here, it's, it's, it's pretty clear. You can't see any large chunks of debris floating around or anything like that. And when I say large chunks of debris, I mean just like bits of algae that's either fell off the side of the pond or anything. Um, and I'm, I'm putting that down to primarily the fact that there's obviously five to six thousand litres more, thousand litres more an hour going through the sieve. So it's simply just pulling more of that debris out and for some little tweaks to the pipe work. In fact, it's not like I'm spending more money on bigger pumps or running more electric to run bigger pumps. I've literally just improved the pipe work slightly to reduce the number of kinks in it and by doing that increase like say the flow through the filter by a third. So. I'm really happy with that. It should make everything more stable. And interestingly as well, the, I have thought about some things I might do in the future regarding maybe buying big up variable pumps because these superfish pumps haven't got any control on them. I can't turn them down in winter. Whereas if I get some variable pumps, I could turn them down in winter and save some electric when they doesn't need the same kind of flow on the pond. To do this though, all I have to do now is undo the union under the pump put the uh, put the new pump on so it's easy to update if I need to. Same kind of litres per hour of 20,000 but do it at 108 watts rather than 220 which may not seem a huge saving but 40 watts over both pumps that's an 80 watt saving every hour of every day. It'd be massive and if I could reduce that down to 50% in the winter say run at maybe 10,000 rather than 20,000 through the winter when I don't need the extra flow. Again that would half my electricity bill for the pond over the winter. So that is something I'd consider as another update in the future. 
but uh, that's obviously a long way down the line now. I didn't want to go to the expense of buying new pumps at the minute, especially seeming what I managed to achieve by doing the pipe work. But I'm also now confident that I can actually add another tier to the shower and not lose too much flow with the extra height being added to the pumps because we've gained so much it wouldn't matter losing a little bit now if I wanted to add another tier to the shower. Uh, I believe the pipe work cost me, I think it was either 100 or 200 pound in total for all the bits of pipe work, which is a lot, but I think for the extra flow gained from it, I think it's definitely been worth it. As I said, if I wanted to keep the existing pipe work, I'd have actually gone to considerably bigger pumps to achieve that kind of water flow increase, so I do believe that's worth it. And meanwhile, I mean, I might as well give you a quick update on some of the fish as well. That's one of the big albino grass carps. Some of the smaller koi I got from Queenie Koi last year and the year before. See in the very back there, there's some of the sturgeon coming across the back. Maybe you can see because of the sun's reflection. Anyway, that's a bit about it for this uh, this update now. Yeah, you, it's just the numbers I wanted to really get across to you and just how important it is to, to basically try and make it as efficient as possible. 